Howdy, Jason Lewis here, and on today's episode of This Old Mustang, the 73 gets a much needed modernization and update to the front suspension. We're gonna be installing the Chris Alston's Chassis Works Total Control Products Front Coilover Conversion Kit into this car. Now this kit has some extremely trick features. We're gonna be doing upper and lower control arms, plus these adjustable strut rods that are really remarkable pieces. All of that centered around the Chris Alston Very Shock coilover. Now I'm gonna be going through all of these pieces in depth throughout the video and doing a step-by-step -step install. Plus I'm actually gonna show you the dramatic improvement in overall suspension geometry that you gain with the Total Control Products conversion kit. Now that it translates into a better handling, safer, and much higher performance muscle car. We all like that, right? So hang in there while I cue up some cheesy montage music and get this stock suspension out of here. There's no particular order to the disassembly process. If it's old and crappy, take it off. The coil springs, on the other hand, require some respect. If you treat them like they want to murder you and use a quality spring compressor and your brain, things will be just fine. You don't have to remove the brakes for the coilover install, but I know the stock brakes will not suffice, so they go away. And that goes for the sway bar as well. Here's a tip. Don't use a half-inch impact gun with a swivel. I almost shot my eye out with that nut. When it comes to popping the ball joints loose, here are a couple of ways to do that. This was my grandpa's favorite. Flip the castle nut over, thread it back on a bit, and just hit that sucker with a hammer. Game on. Then, there's the old pickle fork on the end of an air hammer. Ball joints don't stand a chance, but neither do the grease caps. Yeah. Upper control arms, out. Lower control arms, ejected. Making a big mess on the floor. Spray that bad boy down with degreaser, mixed with one part elbow grease, and the rest of the day is spent rolling the odometer backwards by knocking miles of grime off the car. Now for the good stuff. This is the Total Control Products Front Coilover Conversion Kit for the Vintage Mustang. As you can see, right out of the box, it looks fantastic. And that's not just the near-perfect spray arc welding, or the expertly engineered billet aluminum pieces, or the fact that a ninja with a TIG welder spent time on these parts. The thing that attracted me most to this kit is the True Center spherical bearings. They have a larger diameter than rod end bearings and use high strength polymer races to keep the harshness out of your high performance. So let's get this kit on the Mustang. The only modifications you might have to make is to drill out the spot welds on the shock tower to remove the old spring locator. The cutting bit comes with the kit and since I spent a few minutes cleaning up these fender wells, I went ahead and scuffed the area and shot some more rattle can bed liner on there. Next up is to drop the new upper shock mount in place and bolt the backing plate up. Torque these bolts to 30 pound feet. So when you're putting your lower control arms in, You want to make sure that you get your eccentric eliminators lined up. They give you three different adjustment holes. You want those to be the same on the front and the rear of the bolt. So you just slide that on and it'll either match up or it won't when you get it right. Okay? So you want that the same front to rear. So once you get your eccentrics matched up and seated, you torque this thing to 65 foot-pounds. Now what's really exciting about every single part I put on out of this kit is that they all feel really strong and really well designed and well built. The true center pivot points, instead of just rod end bearings inside of these things, 
just feel positive and absolutely rock solid, but yet they won't tra transmit any of that harshness that a typical rod end bearing would have. You know, my 82 Camaro, I had rod end bearings on everything. <laughs> And yeah, you know, it handled precise and you know, it was awesome, but it also transmitted every single pebble and bit of road noise right into my spine, you know, and it just emanates throughout the car. Now these things give you the same precision without any of that. So I'm very excited to see what this drives like, because this, this just feels good. Now here's the upper control arm pretty beefy and pretty awesome looking piece as well just like everything else in this kit now it's got double adjustability for a ton of caster and camber adjustments it's got a billet aluminum pivot shaft and a replaceable ball joint cup at the end a very popular thing to do is to do the one inch drop and they also offer that in a pivot shaft so you can pick up the stock holes but drop the upper control arm by one inch and what that does is it actually adds negative camber through the suspension travel. Now a stock car is designed to, as the tire goes up, it's designed to add positive camber, rolling the tire onto its outside and creating a push scenario or where it loses traction. Now that creates a very stable driving car, but not really great for high performance options like what we're trying to do with this thing. Here is a good example of the stock suspension at work on the Mustang. Notice the top of the tire is leaning out, which means the inside of the contact patch on the road itself is lifting off and giving up traction. That is positive camber and is positively no good for performance driving. Now, my guy Carl at Total Control Products, not just a sales guy, he's an actual car guy. And he was able to recommend to me, he says, look, the early Mustangs, yes, you wanna do the one inch drop kit. This car, because Ford slowly migrated those upper control arm mounting holes down the shock tower into the more desirable position, we're gonna go in the stock holes with the straight across pivot shaft. And if I need to add more aggressive nature to the car, we could go ahead and do the one inch drop pivot shaft so you can use the sets, the stock holes and you actually gain that one inch camber change in the upper control arm mount. So it's pretty trick. And on their recommendation, we're gonna go in the stock holes straight across the shaft. Okay, so now it's time to put together the strut rod. I'm gonna put a little anti-seize here on the front. Now this is what they're calling a true center. Now it's, it's also the same technology that they have inside the bearing inside here that, that makes this piece so cool. Now, let me get the thread set here. They say to measure one and one sixteenth inch. Set your jam nut there. We'll thread this onto the strut rod. Now what you get here is this really cool, instead of having two pieces of rubber smashed together between the steel there, you now pivot here. And so there's no bind, no, no drag in there at all, and yet it holds the center, that's why they call it the true center, it doesn't change, it doesn't deflect, it's just a really cool piece. And then this billet piece is what locates it on the front. So we'll put a little anti-seize in front of that as well. And we'll get this into position. Mmm, tastes like chicken. Now these just slide into the stock position. Depending on what year you have, you might have to uh, chisel out the inner sleeve on this year. You don't have to. So it goes in there, and then this billet piece captures it. Screw that on. Let's go up. Now, you want to torque. You just drive this with a half-inch driver, and they want you to torque it at 150 pounds and not use an impact. So I'm going to have to use a big breaker bar. I don't have a torque wrench that goes to that. So I'll use a breaker, and we'll get that seated.
little bit of Loctite on there. And that goes to 30 pounds foot. Okay, now it's time to align. You adjust the strut rod by twisting it out and you will wanna do an initial alignment so that your lower control arm looks pretty level to the mounting point. So I got that. You take the billet lower shock mount there's an arrow on the bottom that should point to the forward, the front of the car. You line that up. We install the hardware that mounts that. Again, everything on this kit just seems to bolt together so easily. Very refreshing. And then you want this torqued to 50 foot pounds. Calibrated elbow was pretty close that time. My stock disc brake spindles for this car is the perfect spindle to use for this. So as long as they weren't hurt or fractured in any way, that's what we should use. So I wire wheeled them, cleaned them up really good, examined them, they look great. Put a coat of black paint on them and that's what we're gonna use. Get your castle nuts on. So this is the shock that we're going to use in this installation. It's the Chris Alston Very Shock Dual Adjustable. So you have rebound and compression adjusters right here on the shock body and that enables you to change or tune the suspension to your liking for different things that you're going to do. Now this is going to be a commuter, canyon, carver, you know, weekend warrior track day autocross kind of thing. So I'll have that adjustability right here. Now they also offer these shocks with remote reservoirs and even more adjustability. But for a guy that's on a meager budget like me, uh, these are a really high performance option for a reasonable price and I'm pretty stoked to be putting these in here. So we're going to get them in there. Actually, before you put them in, here's a recommendation. Set everything to soft and that way you can actually move the shock easier and get the suspension through its suspension travel and just make sure that nothing hits through the whole travel. Now that's just right there is remarkable to me. You just can see everything move through the entire suspension travel. There's no binding. The thing just goes and everything just is absolutely locked in position. Look at that. It's awesome. Shocks in, ran it through the suspension. Uh, travel a few times, shock, nothing hits. It's, this kit's just phenomenal. Everything fits perfect so far. We're gonna do a quick alignment. Now they want you to set the suspension at ride height, which is shock eyelet to shock eyelet, rough dimension, 14 and a quarter inches. So we'll set that to 14 and a quarter inches. And then that way what I'll do is I'll set a baseline camber adjustment here to show you how, now first off, over stock, there was no camber adjustment other than the eccentric at the bottom, the lower control arm. Now with these adjustable control arms, let's just set it in just for fun at, let's say one degree of negative camber, which is what I, I would usually go one and a half degrees for a street car. So actually let's just do that. So I'll set it at one and a half degrees negative camber to start. On this gauge, the readout of 88.5 represents one and a half degrees of negative camber at ride height. Watch as I raise the suspension and the total control products actually induce negative camber gain. On the rotor track, 
that will help to keep the contact patch of the tire consistently maximized with the road surface. Yeah, buddy. Okay, now that we know that our suspension is buttoned up and dialed, it's time to put the coil springs on these things, which is pretty easy. Get your coil spring lower retaining ring. Make sure that you get the seat side up and the adjuster side down. We're gonna go ahead and thread that onto the body of the shock. Then we'll put a little anti-seize on right about where the compression is gonna happen for the coil spring. And that just keeps the threads from galling and gives you a little bit easier adjustment on this lower collar. Okay, now on this particular application, we're gonna start with a 550 pound spring and then we'll see what goes, where it goes from there. I'm not exactly sure what engine's gonna end up in this thing yet. So that's just where we're gonna start. Obviously, Total Control product sells every weight spring you could probably need or imagine. So we'll go from there. Now, once we got that on, you just give it a tighten to about there. And then they have these little Allen heads that push the bearing into the, the race here and that locks your collar in. So we're not gonna do that yet until we get this thing weighted and sitting on the ground. And that's gonna be a little bit of time, but there you go, we'll get these in. See what she looks like. So these are the little spacers you're gonna use on either side of the eyelet on each end of the shock. So you just get those lined up. Get your bolt through, get your washers on, and tighten them up. And these get torched to 55 pounds foot. Now remember I adjusted both the compression and rebound to the softest setting for just the suspension travel run through. So I'm gonna set them now to just a baseline 50-50 setting. So there's 16 clicks total, so I'll just go eight. On each of these, to just have a nice baseline to start with. So, there you have it. The basic install of the Total Control Products front coilover conversion kit for the classic Mustang. Pretty straightforward install, I would say, very easy to do. The hardest part was getting the old junk off and the chassis cleaned up and ready to go to get the new stuff on. Now, when those things happen that way, you really appreciate it because many other things during the buildup won't actually bolt right in. So, I didn't do the anti-sway bars. I'm gonna do another video when I show you front and rear when we get the rear suspension dialed in. Also, we have a couple of interesting questions to do or decisions to make now. What kind of brakes do we run in the front and what kind of steering? Do we do a rack and pinion or do we do a modified stock steering? Please, if you have any recommendations of what you'd like to see or what you think would work good on this in the budget, I'll see what I can acquire or what we can afford. Now don't forget, if you have any questions about anything you see in one of my videos, just hit me up here on the YouTube channel or go to the Auto Edit Facebook page. I'm gonna try to spend a little bit more time there. Another option is to just call my guy Carl at Total Control Products. I'm gonna put their link somewhere about there. So click that and uh, give them a call. They might help you out with other products that might be good for your project car. And don't forget, tell them Large Marge sent you. Until next time, I'm Jason Lewis, enjoy your drive, and I'm out.